please welcome our last presenter, Transit X. So Transit X is rebuilding the transportation infrastructure into sustainable micro rail. So if you're looking to be uh, green and car free, we're developing uh, automated electric vehicles, solving the problems of congestion, crashes, parking issues, pollution, resiliency, and the cost of building infrastructure with these pods that you can board like you would a car. There's a vertical lift that brings you up and then you're merging onto the uh, railway. So you're going on to the, uh, the podway, which is bringing you nonstop to your destination. And you have very frequent stops. So you can have a stop as close as uh, three yards apart and be able to have a very high capacity way of going from uh, point to point. So these are four passenger vehicles. Um, will be operational groundbreaking this year in New Hampshire and then operational next year. And uh, this is our maiden test flight in our facility, our indoor test facility in Lemonster, and we're doing an outdoor test facility in uh, Peabody, uh, Mass. So we're replacing cars, buses, trains, trucks, ferries, um, micro mobility solutions, and essentially make it so you now have green and car free cities and having high capacity public transit systems. So if this was New York City, that would be sort of the road network. So it's a podway network, sort of like sparse roads. So think of it as having a, an Uber waiting for you on every block, except it's three times faster and it's seven times cheaper. So you're looking at about 30 cents a mile. So we have large global partners for both the civil infrastructure and the rolling stock and the energy systems. Uh, projects have started. We have six that are, have started. One of them is in, uh, up in uh, Berlin, New Hampshire, up uh, Jericho Mountain and hundreds of cities are, will be starting within the next couple of years. So we've done about 1,200 proposals for cities around the world. We have uh, representatives of about 40 different countries. So this is an autonomous electric vehicle. It's a four-wheeled um, uh, bogey. It's just your cabin is hanging from it. So it has an electric motor and a battery. There's no powered rail. You have charging ports in the infrastructure. You have battery storage. You have uh, electricity generation on the solar panels and on the pods themselves, running on uh, steel tracks. So you can go to transitx.com slash proposals. You'll see over about 1,000 proposals there. You can see about 100 for all, most of the communities in, in Massachusetts. And we have a high-speed system that would allow you to replace the U.S. interstate system. So that's going 150 miles an hour along highways and being able to put uh, pods in it and have a, a, a pod train. So very high capacity, uh, fast. So we're solving the major challenges um, related to transportation. We're doing this in a short time frame. So our projects are generally, the construction time is about 12 months. Um, we're not asking for any government financing. It's all privately financed, insured with guarantees, uh, with many positive impacts, so better transportation. Uh, is really, uh, and this is, the, uh, this is the vehicle here. This is about, um, we've increased the uh, interior area by about 30% here, and this is the uh, pod that will, um, very lightweight, and um, it's getting about 2,000 miles per gallon equivalent. So, um, and we pay the government 5% of gross revenue for the use of their right of way. So if you look at the, the pollution from air, um, the materials that we use, we don't use any concrete, we don't use any steel. Uh, which is a very small amount of steel for manufacturing, for energy generation, and for water. This is pretty much the way that you're going to reduce a lot of the uh, energy consumption around the world. And that's what we're doing, Transit X, and we're based in Boston. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah, well, we have 12 cities moving forward, which is only about a 1% response rate before we have our first operational system. So you just 
Um, and so we, so think of it this way, we're going to municipality and we're saying we're solving all your major issues and we're not charging you any money and we're paying you 5% of gross revenue and you just have to s let us use non-exclusive use of your public rights of way where it's non-conflicting uses and you can integrate your utilities. So it's a pretty simple, the only thing that they'll say is 95% of them will say, well, have you done it anywhere else yet? So it's like, you're either doing it or you're going to do it later. That's... No, it's sort of like uh, an Uber, so it's going to do facial recognition. As you approach the stop, you're going to wave a pod down, so by the time you get there, it's there with a the door open. Uh, I've already sort of then, you've authenticated with your biometrics. I can link that to a bank account, or it can be a tap-to-pay system, uh, and then you're being charged about 30 cents a mile. So, yeah. Right, but if it was seven times cheaper, you probably would, because this is the cost of mass transit. Well, it's generally, so if you look at the cost of the monthly subscription, it's also based on, on distance. So you're going to look at, you're basically charging by, by distance. And you don't want to have an all-you-can-eat because that encourages, you know, unlimited consumption. So just, you know, if you want to save money, then move closer. And, and uh, so you can have, you, you can make those trade-offs. Uh, yeah. So if it's uh, 9 o'clock in the morning and Mm-hmm. No, because very high capacity for uh, both the, uh, the line capacity, which is about 30,000 passengers per hour, so that's about three times what the red line capacity is. So it's about the equivalent of about 15, 16 lane highway. As far as boarding capacity, if you put a ring of stops around Gillette Stadium, it means that when there's a Patriots game and there's 60,000 people exiting, the constraint is in the size of the opening of Gillette Stadium, not of our capacity. So this would be enough capacity to handle anything, because South Station is only handling about a person every second. Yeah, there's a it's basically an, an off ramp off ramp and it goes down. So yes. Well, you have to look at that, all the different uh, cases of why you're going to get stuck. So power, there's redundancy. Every pod uh, can push or pull another pod. So you look at all the different conditions, and basically it's almost impossible. And if you do, then there's emergency evacuation as well. So, but essentially, you can always be pushed to another stop. Plus, uh, a pod can pull up in parallel, and you can exit from that way as well. So. Yes? Well, there is no steel infrastructure. It's all uh, polycarbonate, so the only steel is the rolling surface. Ah, so, okay. Right, so let's look at the infrastructure. So if you look at a, uh, a vehicle which weighs about 4,000 pounds, electric vehicle, and if you look at our pods are about uh, 125 pounds, so if you look at just the vehicles themselves, the cars that are on along a roadway, that cost more and is more material than not only our vehicles, but all of our infrastructure as well. So our infrastructure is so light, it's lighter. So the cheapest way and the most effective way to create an electric vehicle is to also create the road infrastructure for it to run on. That's how lightweight and efficient it is, is that it's, just, it's cheaper and faster to, to recreate the infrastructure than even just to repave the roads. So it's a very fast infrastructure, yes. Yeah, it's about like an electric bicycle. So it's about 50 decibels, which is basically can't hear it. Yes? Uh, the nominal is uh, 75 feet between it, but uh, every uh, pod, every uh, pole is sacrificial, so you can go up to uh, 150 feet between, between poles. And, yes? No, that's not realistic. No, uh, cars. Cars are our, our biggest competitor, and, and I guess you'd say autonomous vehicles. Yes? Yeah, how about um, just getting in and out and for those who might be physically um, challenged? Yeah, yeah, there's a flat bottom pod that allows you to have walkers, strollers. Uh, it also has, because it's a vertical lift, allows you to first elevate it so that way you can have assisted lift. So it's uh, easier than getting into a, a chair. So, and it's also wheelchair accessible. Yes? Yeah. 
So as far as uh, resiliency, this is, will be the most resilient uh, system. So you look at all the different causes of, uh, um, you know, so here's what we've designed for uh, tornadoes, parades, ice storms, blackouts, mudslides, sinkholes, tree falling, wind gusts, because it's a covered bridge. And when your rails are covered, that means a tree branch falling just continues to fall. If you have floods, then the pod just comes down to the flood level and you just board by waiting to a stop or you take your raft and then you switch over to the pod system. So. Right, because most of the times things go on gravity, so you have things that are covering the tracks. When you have your tracks that are covered, most of the time it's falling to the ground, and then it's just like, okay, that was fine. Next. Oh, it would eliminate pretty much all the issues that we have anywhere in the Boston area, and you're just doing the entire Boston area. Let's put it just, if you look at the, uh, uh, what they're talking about for the cost of just linking the uh, blue line to the red line, uh, you could do all of the Boston area 600 miles for the same cost they're talking about doing a half a mile. So just to kind of give you a, you know, a, a notion of cost. Yes. Uh, that's our first, one of our first installations will be in uh, New Hampshire and, and Berlin. There's a Jericho Mountain to go up to the top. You know how like the Cog Railroad goes up to the top of Mount Washington? So this is the clean version of that. It's part of an energy renewable park where they have uh, wind turbines at the top. Right now you have ATVs that you can take to the top, but he wants to put along his uh, ridge line, uh, the podway. So 24 hours a day, you can basically take a, a ride up. And... Of, of course, yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, I, I've told I'm, I'm out of time, but you can uh, see me after the uh, talk. Thank you very much.